In the name of God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us. Amen. Sarah laughed. Moses couldn't string a sentence together. Jeremiah pleaded youth. Jonah caught the ferry in the opposite direction. And Mary queried it. All too quickly we go to her, here am I. But actually, her initial response is no different to that of Sarah, Moses, Jeremiah, or Jonah. Impossible. Mary questions and queries, like we invariably do when the depth of God's call dawns on us. Graham, you know about this, and no less you, Rachel, Chad, and Olivia. How can this be, having to give up this home, this school, this job? move away from many friends, start all over again. Impossible is what we want to say, and it's the one word which, in a quietly devastating way, occurs in both readings we have heard this morning. Impossible. It is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. This verse from the perhaps more obscure reading from Hebrews is worth noting, especially when you work hard, as I know you will, Graham. But even working with blood, sweat, and tears, it won't take away your own sins, or other people's, or the church's. It is only the coming of Christ Jesus into the world that does that. The passage from Hebrew also reminded me of your studies in Jerusalem and indeed of the pilgrimage we led there together. And so I thought of one of your new areas of responsibility in the Diocese of Worcester, interfaith relationships. I know that a supersessionist understanding of Christ abolishing or replacing the first covenant won't sit well with you. So rather than speaking of Christ abolishing the Jewish right and covenant, we can say he takes it up in order to establish the second one. The arrival of the second covenant is a building on and a building up of the people of God. The arrival of the second covenant is announced to Mary by the angel who, incidentally, does not appear to have any issues with human sexuality. In that realm divine, all things are possible. How does the angel from that realm relate to Mary? It has been illustrated many times. Anyone entering the old choir stalls in Hexham Abbey goes under the passage of the 16th century rood screen. On the north side is a depiction of the Annunciation, Mary and the angel, and between them, in the gap dividing the realms, lilies, unusually red ones, mindful of the blood of Christ. It is God's angel who brings the word as it is flung out towards Mary and curled up to her ear. God's impossible way of doing things. The angel can't really explain it all to Mary and only points to another impossible event Elizabeth expecting a child. So for Mary, 
Change is on the cards. Change is what happens to her from the outside. She has little control. But it is her inner response to change which matters. Here we find transition. Transition in her as she responds, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And only with this transition do we get to transformation. For her to become the mother of God, for Christ Jesus to come among us. Like for Mary, with Jesus inside us, there is growth. It remains God's story. It's about God who makes the impossible possible, the unlikely picked for no good reason but grace. The fact that we might deem our calling impossible and turn away from God is what Karl Barth calls the impossible possibility. Yet, neither Mary, nor you, nor I, are some puppet in God's theatre. Mary changes from being an observer to being an actor in the God event. Change, transition and transformation. It happens in dialogue with the angel. A favourite poet theologian of mine, Frederick Buchner, reflects on this dialogue as follows. Mary struck the angel Gabriel as hardly old enough to have a child at all, let alone this child. But he'd been entrusted with a message to give her, and he gave it. He told her what the child was to be named, and who he was to be, and something about the mystery that was to come upon her. You mustn't be afraid, Mary, he said. As he said it, he only hoped she wouldn't notice that beneath the great golden wings, he himself was trembling with fear to think that the whole future of creation hung now on her answer. For any change in our lives to become a fruitful transition leading to transformation, we need that open discourse one with the other, as Mary had with the angel, without fear, in a supportive community and fellowship. Many of those who have supported you, Graham, in this way, as you have developed your ministry, are here today at least from Scotland, from Nunthorpe, from North Ormsby, and from Hexham. And with God's grace, we all need to work at strengthening that support for one another in our churches, as we find change thrust upon us. The old maps, they don't work anymore. So that we are led into that transition that is open for God's strange way of doing things. God who makes the impossible possible and blesses us by transforming us, our church and our world. It's what God did through Mary. So I think one of the jobs of a bishop is to have that holy imagination which brings others, individuals and communities, to realize that, no, they don't need to give birth to Jesus, that one's done, but that nevertheless, they are graced. And God can and will do wonderful things with them and through them, including the unexpected and the unusual. You will be drawing together and drawing out the energies, skills and leadership of the whole community.
finding places of enchantment in the black country, as you have done in all the places where you have been before. I wonder what Mary's hopes and aspirations were before her angelic encounter. Was she preoccupied with the price of bread? As many indeed have cause to be today. Or dreaming dreams of married life with Joseph. Or even dreaming of a time in which her people would be liberated from Roman rule. When Mary says, yes, when she assents to this impossible God, her eyes are opened towards that word, that world, that realm on the other side of the gap across which the angel had flung God's word out towards her. Mary becomes a prophet. She senses and sees the parallel reality of the kingdom. And she sings as we shall do, at the end of this service. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord. Powers and dominions lay their glory by. The hungry are fed, the humble lifted high. When Origen asks, what's the point of Christ being born of the Virgin, yet not in me? It invites and challenges us to join in Mary's yes, to be transformed and to seek the transformation of our world towards the kingdom, to seek to grow together as God's kingdom people, all, all, called, sent, commissioned and one of us as Bishop of Dudley. Sarah laughed. Moses couldn't string a sentence together. Jeremiah pleaded youth. Jonah caught a ferry in the opposite direction. Mary queried it. But we are all here today, Graham, to say with you, to say with you now, and to say reassuringly for you, in the coming years, yes, with God's help and all our prayers. Amen.